Alrighty guys, it's the middle of February. It's gonna be about 65 or so today and it's gonna get down to like 50 tonight. Perfect day and night for an overnighter. All right, so uh, what do you say we unpack the bike? I set up the hammock and the rest of the camp and uh, see you in a minute. Alrighty guys, what's in this saddlebag here? Lantern light. Fishing accessories, footprint, hammock setup, and tarp, and a zip tie in the bottom of the bag. I could roll this stuff up an awful lot tighter, but uh, I just kind of threw it in the saddlebag so we could have a good time today. So. Alright guys, so what's in uh, this saddlebag? Got my GSI Glacier stove out here today. A speaker. Extra water. Ice water, actually. A tank of gas for my stove. This is actually my charging station. Don't laugh, it works. It's been working for about 25, 30 years, so I have no reason to change it. I have a pigtail over here that comes off my battery. I plug that into that pigtail and uh, then I plug my little uh, doodads in there and I charge up my stuff while I'm riding. Extra pair of spectacles. If you wear glasses, you know. If you go somewhere, especially out in the woods, you should have an old pair with you just in case you break your current pair. And the bag that I'm keeping my hammock in is actually the bag to my rain cover for my Harley. It's a Nelson rig, really nice rain cover, and it came with this little compression sack, and uh, my hammock fits in it real good, and I could really squeeze it a lot tighter if I wanted to. So let's set this thing up. Okay, that's about right as far as I'm concerned. If you put your hand up like that, it's about a 25 or 30 degree angle, depending on how many times you've had your hands broken. And that's what a lot of people say is the good hang. I'll show you that in a second. Not perfect, but good enough. And uh, I personally prefer my feet end to be up just a little bit higher than the head end. But uh, that's what we got going on here, so let's, uh, let's move along. Now I'm still trying to figure out the best way to set this up. And uh, what I'm gonna try to do today is where I'd be running my ridge line on either side of the tarp, put a long piece of cordage on there, and we're gonna apply it like that. But uh, I wanna give a shout out to my friend Eddie, North Carolina Gray Man, you want to know how to set a tarp up, go to his channel. He will show you how to set a tarp up. For gear on the uh, let me see if my uh, idea will work. guys it's gonna get down to about 50 degrees tonight and I have been doing some experiments in my backyard with what works and what doesn't work 
and I'm finding out that between my sleeping bag under quilt that I made and this here piece of sheepskin that I put inside my hammock I've been staying nice and warm I mean like down to 35 30 degrees and then I've also on top of that put with the uh, sleeping bag I've put a poncho liner in there and a poncho on the outside as a windbreak and that took me down to like 25 degrees in the backyard so I'm working on a good theory on how to work this um, I'm actually thinking about contacting the place that I bought this sheepskin from and seeing if they'd maybe make me a custom size one that'll fit the way I need it to fit in here and it'd be nice I mean it takes up a lot of space but it's nice and uh, here in another month or so ain't gonna have to worry about it no way and my uh, poncho liner will probably be a good enough uh, under quilt and uh, at least until fall so let's put this thing together And as you can see, I have my uh, vintage Italian rucksack with me today. Really digging it, you know, it's like a giant damn suitcase. I'll talk about that later. All right, this here's the uh, under quilt. And this here is my River Country Products mummy bag and the stuff sack is big enough that I've also got a poncho liner in there. Works out really good. My uh, pillow, River Country Products pillow. I believe they still have these things on sale for like $9.95 or something like that. Really nice little pillow. And for later on when it cools off, I got my poncho. And my uh, gigantic beach towel size microfiber cloth towel. We'll go through what's in the pockets here in a minute. And this bag right here, Sports Academy, like $9.99, 45 degree bag, converted into my uh, under quilt. And the red carabiner is for my head. Just a reminder, what I did was I just put some grommets in there and uh, run it through and it's about the right size for it. It fits real good. might look a little sloppy but trust me it works great so now when I'm at the house I keep this sleeping bag in a trash bag so it's just loose laying in there because I don't like them compressed when I'm at the house
And I'm sure if I took my time to fold this up really good, it'd be even better. But uh, for right now, this is working good. So what I do is I use my River Country Products mummy bag. I lay it up in here like that. I get my feet in it, and then I wrap myself all around it. And then I'll uh, take this here poncho liner and throw on top of that. Like I said, I'm I'm good down to about 30 degrees the way this is sitting right here. All right, so you just take that, undo the flap, and uh, sometimes I use dryer sheets and bits of dryer sheets to store my gear. And we'll just let that sit there for a minute or two, and then I'll I'll uh, give it a puff and blow it up. You see now, my other option would be to take my poncho and hook it up by the corners up here and over there and then just kind of flop it up over the top of this and it acts like a windbreaker and it really does work. Alright, and there it is. It's got a soft side and a rougher side, but uh, I like it. Now, I'll probably let a little air out when I get ready to sleep in it, but uh, for 10 bucks, it's a great pillow. guys so what else is in my pack been bringing this along with me lately it's a little uh, notebook so I can keep notes and write things down and a book that I may or may not talk about on this trip if not I'll talk about it later and when I do I'll be busting some bubbles I can assure you that Now here's a hack that I did to this here pack. It had this stupid freaking chain lock system thing on here. On a canvas pack, really? I mean, I, if I really wanted what was in here, I'd just cut it open, right? So it made no sense to me. Okay. So I took all that stuff off, and then I put some stretch cord in there, and it seems to be working pretty good. And also, I am seriously thinking about maybe trying to make a frame for this. So in this pocket over here, I've got a stuff sack and I got my food in here. Of course I got more food than I need, but uh, if I plan a menu out meal per meal and I don't have any extra meals, I'm stuck with what I got. When I do it this way and have like two extra meals, well at least I have a choice. I don't have to eat what's on the menu, I can eat uh, maybe what I'm supposed to eat tomorrow or the next day, right? Something like that. Okay, now over here in this pocket, I don't have a whole lot of stuff, but uh, what's in here is important. I've got some uh, baby wipes. I've got my sewing kit. I've got a chunk of fat wood. Flashlight. Lantern, extra lantern. I always come out here with two lanterns. This here is uh, my personal bag, you know, hairbrush, toothpaste, that sort of thing. My $5 Troy built saw works great. And uh, because this is only a. Because it's only an overnighter, I have a very small fire kit with me today. And what it is, of course, is my, my ferro rod with, I use a jigsaw blade for a striker. Works great. It's nice and hard. Don't fool around. Give it a couple of smacks and you got a fire. And then in here, real basic today. 
I have some of those cardboard uh, fire starter things, and then I got some cotton balls dipped in uh, Vaseline and sawdust. And really, I could get by with a big lighter in the cotton balls, but, uh, you know, all us YouTube superstars, we love showing off with our ferro rods, right? Well, I'm not in the show-off stage yet, but uh, I am learning how to work it. Yeah, I can't help but laugh sometimes when I see people starting their uh, stoves and everything with a ferro rod. It's like, really? Why would you waste the gas? Just flick your bick, turn the damn thing on, and poof. Anyways, and because of the type of food I'm cooking on this adventure, I brought my GSI Glacier stove. It's not that little pocket rocket thing that a lot of uh, hikers use. This is an actual stove. And I bought this because it has, um, I've reviewed this before, I don't remember like 10,000 BTUs or maybe it was 11,500 but it's a good hot stove I haven't been using it lately because it's been cold out it's a isobutane stove and for those of you that don't know when it gets down around 30 degrees 20 degrees and it's really cold these types of stoves don't work real good they might even actually fail depending on your altitude so that's when the old trusty uh, rusty Coleman comes out and uh, because the weather's nice, we're using this one. Great stove, it works good. And I have not broke this out in a long, long time. This is a Palco Boy Scout mess kit. That's right. And of course I got my uh, knife, fork, and spoon. That's not Boy Scout stuff, that's just uh, Legal Sports Academy. And so what I have in here, of course I have the clamshell. And I brought this out, I really only needed the pot, but uh, I brought the plates out because the food I'm cooking, I wanna put it on a plate so you can see what it looks like. So then I got my little fry pan, I got my uh, plate. And then in here, I got some hand sanitizer. I have my cleaning sponge with some uh, soap already on it. And then I got my military pocket knife to open up cans and whatnot. Yeah, I don't use this too often anymore because, um, well, I don't really know why. I just don't. I got all these other mess kits. I usually use them, but, uh, at times, this is a nice one, but uh, I'm actually kind of preferring to tote the weight and uh, use the cast iron skillet and fry pan, but uh, when you're traveling light, there's nothing wrong with using something like this. A lot of good memories with this. Now, this is not the one I had as a kid, so uh, I kind of acquired this when I had moved into my big shop before I got sick. When I was cleaning the place up, there was all kinds of junk in there. And that was in there, and I was like, oh yeah, we're setting that aside. And uh, I cooked a lot of lunches down there in my shop on the uh, old wooden stove with this. But uh, now I use it for camping. And it doesn't work good for every scenario, but, uh, for, the scenario, but for the scenario that we're doing today, it's going to work great. So back in the pack it goes for right now. So, I've showed you basically my gear for uh, this adventure. I need to put some gloves on and get me some wood. So, uh, we'll see you in a little while. Alrighty guys, as you can see, camp is set up. It's um, a little after four. What do you say we uh, make an early dinner? <laughs> 